This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Okay, their new album is All This Time. You can see them live at City Winery, June 11th. All the tour dates, LarryAndTeresa.com and or LarryCampbellMusic.net. It is Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. And for our listeners and our viewers that attended our Love Rocks NYC show at the Beacon a few weeks back, Larry was playing guitar in Will Lee's house band. What a band. What a show. We're going to get into that. Um, but, Larry, you and Teresa uh, have now been married for 40 years. Do I do I have 35. that? 35. 35, but been together for Who's like counting? 40? Yeah, whatever. All <laughs> it right. feels like 40. <laughs> this is your fourth album. To, yeah, this is your fourth album together amongst all the other work you two do. And let's start right there. It's not like either of you come home from work and say, hey, honey, how was your day? Uh, well, you know because you were there and uh, we were doing the same thing. Right. Uh, how do you keep it together all these years without yeah i mean you know well the first 15 years we were mostly apart okay doing different things yeah so a lot of people said oh that's how you stayed married this (laughs) (laughs) right yeah but like i'm going to tennessee tomorrow and i said i don't want to be apart it's been great being together these last few weeks because i'm down there a lot with my family my mother yeah you know i was helping take care of my dad before he passed and yeah so um yeah, I don't want to be apart. It's it's fun to be together. That's yeah, pretty cool. There's a reason we got married. <laughs> <laughs> well, this new album, and I'm sort of over saying this, but it happened. It's it's been happening uh, about people's new albums. It was kind of a a pandemic album, if you will. Uh, both of you did not get off easy during the pandemic. I have read and I have heard, uh, and some of the songs at least reflects sort of being in a band together and a relationship together for 40 years, right? Yeah, when when I first started coming up with songs for this record, they were just songs, you know. They just would come to me uh, in snippets, and I'd, I'd come up with a phrase. You know, it's always melody first. I always get the melody, and then some phrase will come in, and then it turns into a song. And I didn't see any connection between any of them, you know. And, and Teresa, after hearing the bulk of what we had done, um, just sort of found a connection, you know, a thread there. Which, if there, if it's there, it, it came out subconsciously for me, you know. Right. And, and it's, um, you know, relation. It was when we were looking for a title, trying to find like maybe one of the song titles, whatever for the record. And all this time just kept being it. And then it just, then I just kind of saw the whole. It's like all the whole record is about relationships. There may be one song that is a little not but yeah it's just the good the bad and ugly of relationships (laughs) the beginning the end the you know but Teresa where were were you born and raised uh West Tennessee okay halfway between Memphis and Nashville we're we're technically in the Delta we're like the eastern edge of the Delta and Larry born and raised in Manhattan East 64th Street it's as extremely different as you could possibly be and be in the same country well, Larry, I want to ask you about that because you have seen, uh, uh, you know, you've seen the folk scene explode from Greenwich Village. Then there's a band like Kiss. Yeah. They're from Queens. Right. In the early 70s, the New York Dolls. The Dolls, I was going to yeah. say, yeah. And then the whole CBGB scene. I mean, you, you've probably saw this. You were growing up. Sure. Punk, New Wave, Ramones, Talking Heads, yeah, Blondie, it... Patti Smith, Television. Yet you chose... Right, but it, for me, it was all before that, the Fillmore in the mid-60s, you know? It was all about all those bands Did you go in. to the Fillmore? Did you every, see shows? Every weekend, Larry every had weekend. a yeah. friend, they were like 12, whose dad was in the business, I guess, right? Bob Thiel, who was a, a, a well-known record producer back then, did B.B. King's records, all these I've great heard, jazz I've, records. I've you seen know, and yeah. read about that name, I think. He initially would take us a couple of times to the Fillmore. At 12. At 12, yeah. And, um, That's dude, just not even fair. Introduced us to Janis Joplin. Okay, please like don't that. tell me that you saw the Allman Brothers. I night. saw the Allman Brothers. I was Come at on. that Oh, okay, wait a minute. Hendrix at New Year's Eve, the Hendrix New Year's Eve, the, the uh, that show, Led Zeppelin's first American concert where they were opening for Iron Butterfly, and half halfway through the Iron Butterfly set, people were yelling, Zeppelin, Zeppelin, you know, and that was wow. a, their first American Did they play Inagata DeVita for like 18 yeah. minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> you are so lucky. Oh, there yeah. aren't right? many people that right? can say. I mean, okay, that the the album that got me into the Almond Brothers was live at Fillmore yeah, East. Sure. I mean, that was the one, and then Eat a Peach, and then you know things like that. But I, wow, I, I didn't even know what I was seeing. Some my friend, you know, my friend and I would just went there. Who's this, who's the Almond Brothers? I don't know. Let's just well, go, nobody you know? knew who yeah, they were. But see, then. he was yeah. already coming to my neck of the woods with the almonds. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And and let me just say the iron iron. That iron butterfly was not waltzing through the cotton patch where I was hoeing cotton. <laughs> right, of or course. Corn with yeah. my brothers and my mother. Not yet, the anyway. Iron butterfly yeah. was not waltzing through the cotton patch, you know, on any <laughs> yeah, given yeah. Saturday afternoon. Such a great song. No. Though. 18 minutes right, of psychedelic yeah, craziness. Yeah. And um, I, I went from all that great San Francisco psychedelic, all that's so fertile at, at that time musically, you know, but, but there was a thread of. Of this roots American music going on through all this stuff, and I yeah. got I got way, thank you Jerry Garcia yeah way down deep into the real stuff you know the blues the bluegrass the country music the stuff that came from her part of the world down there yeah and, and I just couldn't get enough of it and especially when because like, you know who was waltzing through the cotton cotton patch was Carl Perkins Johnny Cash you know yeah. that's yeah. that's Definitely. what Maybell, I was you know, getting you yeah know, we'd go and see the Chuck Wagon Gang and if anybody in your listening audience knows who that is you get extra points <laughs> did you ever see George Jones perform live I did not no but it was on the radio it was the wallpaper of me growing right. up I mean my brother and I were getting great. Uh, Great a station out of Memphis, WHBQ back then was uh, famous for just playing all kinds of stuff. So I got that. And sometimes if the night sky was right, we would get um, out of Chicago, we would get some good stuff. I love But the then otherwise classic. it was my parents with the, George Jones and all of that. The classic happened. country, I classic love. Classic country. On this it's new hard album. for me to move forward, you know, yeah, no, <laughs> as an you. old-timer. On this new album, some really special people, uh, more special people like Bill Payne of Little Feet, uh, also some drums from the great, late, great Levon Helm that he, I guess, recorded shortly before his passing. And that is how you two met, right, Levon Helm? No. No? no. That's no. when we started working together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. we had been married then, so that was 05. We had been married about 15 yeah. years by then. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. And um, But I left Bob Dylan's band in 05. The end of 04, beginning of 05, Levon called and said, I heard you left Bob. Come on up here and let's make some music, you know. And and, wow. uh, and soon after that, Teresa was involved, you know, and and, and we it was just... Leon, a, Levon and I are simpatico for the cotton patch, you see. Right. We yeah. have that in oh, common. We grew up yeah. the same yeah. way, man. And that was the beginning of the greatest music-making period of our lives. And it, it was where we honed what we do now because, you know, Levon wanted everybody everybody to participate to stand up front and do something you know and and we we just worked out these tunes and then this song um some uh, of them i grew up singing yeah uh, like uh, i learned at my father's knee that's where i got my music when he was going to the Fillmore east i was getting <laughs> hank, w hank williams and jimmy rogers and johnny cash at my father's knee you know yeah and my yeah, mother. yeah um t t tell us more about levon and working with him because i know that you also produced two Grammy winning albums three for him, him right? Or three. three yeah. Um yeah. And, and you toured with him and you did uh, what was his uh Midnight Ramble? The midnight you know, Rambles. I yeah. mean every geez. every Saturday night at, at, at his at his barn up there in Woodstock and just we couldn't wait for it to start and we couldn't wait didn't want it to end, right? Yeah, yeah. And um it, it was it was so this was Levon's Phoenix rising from the ashes period, you know, because yeah. he'd, he'd had throat cancer. Doctor said he'd never talk again, let alone sing. His voice started coming back. He was about to declare bankruptcy. He figured out a way to raise money by getting people to come to his barn, you know, and 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 the money started coming in, and and then and then friends and great, you know, people like Amy Lou and Elvis Costello and and uh, Billy Bob Thornton and Chris Christopherson and all these Nick people, Lowe. Nick Lowe I mean, it's just... would come and just. You Rodney know, Crowell. Play with us, you know, and um, and it just it was this went on for almost a decade before we lost him, and and it was it was the greatest period, as I said, of music making that we've been involved with. It, just about the joy of making music, and and um, one of my favorite images was uh, Ricky Skaggs and them didn't want to mess up their bus coming through the little country road up to oh. Levon's barn, so they're they're walking up the little dirt road to his house with their <laughs> instruments on their back. That's yeah. one of my favorite images. Fantastic. Of that. You know, I had Robbie Robertson on this show several times over the years before he passed, and you know, I asked him 
about, and he had nothing but love for all the other band members in the band. And, you know, Levon wrote that book. Um, and I'm just wondering, did he ever talk about Robbie towards the end? Did they ever come to a, a happy place before he passed? Well, no. No? No, <laughs> no he did in talk a word. about Robbie. He would talk about Robbie, and we got his perspective. You got an earful, basically, yes. right? Yes. But I always kept in mind this is Levon's perspective, you know? Right. And it wasn't for us to judge whether that's exactly what happened or not, but it's the way he felt about it, you know? Yeah. And uh, I knew, I've met Robbie a couple times, never got him, never got to know him, and never heard his side of the story directly from him, you know? So so I've reserved judgment on that. But, but you know, Levon had his point and yep. he was going to make but he know. wanted to move forward he didn't want to yeah. live in that he wanted to yeah. move forward do music and yeah, go music. forward yeah. with music and do what's next with music right when they were doing the documentary ain't in it for my health and they followed us all around you know like two or three years almost and uh I kept saying, you guys cannot do this documentary about Levon without going to Turkey Scratch. You just can't not go to Arkansas. And they kept saying, he just doesn't want to. He wants to go forward. Yeah. And right. I thought, wow, that's, yeah. We're speaking with Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Their new album is All This Time. You can see them at the City Winery here in the city, June 11th. All the tour dates, LarryandTeresa.com or LarryCampbellMusic.net. Larry, I got to ask you, you toured with Dylan. You mentioned it before uh, a number of years. You were on at least one of his albums, Love and Theft. Um, Tell our listeners how that came about, uh, you working with Bob, and what it was like to work with him and tour with him and record with him. Oh, well, that's a book. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But um, so, So I joined that band. Tony Garnier, Bob's bass player for years, was a great friend of mine. We'd been playing music together since the late 70s when he came to New York and and um, uh, this was 97, I guess it was, and uh, Bob was looking for somebody, for a guitar player, and uh, Tony recommended me, and I went down and just played with Bob in the rehearsal studio a few days, and then... None, of, none of the songs that would actually be yeah, in right, the sets. Right, so, Of course not. Why, yeah, why, you know? Which is mostly playing old rock and roll tunes and old country tunes, you know? And then he said, okay, we're going, we're, we're leaving tomorrow. Uh, and then we started this tour playing Bob Dylan tunes, many of which I'd never heard before, let alone played before, you know? But, it wasn't like all the hits. It was just it was deep yeah, cuts from deep whatever. Deep cuts from whatever. Yeah, from a deep yeah, catalog. Right, yeah, yeah, very yeah. deep, yeah. yeah. And... Um, uh, and that went on for eight years. And um, so, uh, in a nutshell, it was a roller coaster. It was a total roller coaster, you know. Great, um, it, uh, uh, it, but but at the end, you know. Uh, uh, People like Paul up, McCartney would call, and Larry couldn't do it because yeah. you could never know when you were going to be on the road or not. You were like a yeah. doctor on call yeah, constantly, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. And um, you know. I mean the guy. So when I was growing up, yeah. when I was growing up as a musician, it was the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Bob Dylan. You know that was the holy trinity, basically. You know, and um, and to imagine that. I mean the Beatles would never need me. Those Stones got what they need. You know, but to imagine that I could be up there on a stage playing guitar with Bob Dylan was was like mind blowing. Yeah, mind blowing. You know, and um, and. And he turned it down at first yeah, right, because yeah. we had we just wanted to be together for <laughs> yeah, a while, right. you know. And the next morning he got up, and I was thinking too, like you don't you don't turn this down. And he he said, oh, "What have I done?" Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, yeah. And I called his manager, Kramer, Jeff Kramer, back. I said, "Wait a minute, I'm rethinking this." Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, uh, and so so, the, um, it was it was the greatest experience you could ask for. But when it was time to leave, it was time to leave. Got that's it. All, you know? Yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah. Same question about Phil Lesh. Oh, man. Aww. Uh, yeah. We, we, oh, yeah. it's just happy time. Yeah, right. It's, it's just... so, yeah. Phil, Phil, you know. Phil and Fred's, right? Yeah, right, yeah. right. Which, Feel it happen and let it out of your instrument, whatever yeah. your whatever your instrument and is. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. For uh, both of us, you know, it was, for Teresa and I, it was just, uh, it was all about going for it. Just go for it. You and know? things and, that he had me do, I would never have approached in a million years, like um, a Tina Turner tune. I wouldn't approach a Tina. I wouldn't do that because it's Tina Turner. Yeah. I have too much, you know. And uh, he would throw stuff at me like that. And if he tell, if he asked for it, you know, I would 
first I would go, I'm not doing that. But would he I would... have you sing the Donna Jean Godchild type things on any of the dead songs that he would do? No, or just come no. whatever came to his mind? No. Or... Yeah, whatever yeah. came. Whatever he just thought, oh, let's try this. You know, like like he had me do River Deep, Mountain High. But outside of the, there would be a moment like that in the show, uh, you know, outside of all the dead stuff you would do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he just liked the harmonies and we would just find some weird stuff. He had me doing like an ethereal, really um, octave high um and dark star oh yeah that would that was wild how about and you just of... pull stuff out of you you didn't know you you could do that your voice would do because he just heard all of this unusual did you do box of rain with him oh yeah uh, oh you know, yeah it just was just a sweet and sweet thing. what's become of the or baby is a sweet thing <laughs> Teresa did what's become well of one the night baby. we did yeah. all of oxa moxa yeah. at um what's the famous oh my one? god at the wow at the all of oxa moxa mm-hmm. and um Working Dead, I think. Working Man's Dead. Working Man's yeah. Dead, maybe that 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 mm. at the out on um, in San Francisco, right before the war field, right before it closed. One more question like that, uh, Elvis Costello. Yeah, what a great cat, man! What a great cat, and what a broad musical sense he's got. Just just um, uh, he loves music. He just loves it. You know, yeah. Keith Richards, the same thing. You know, you get that. Uh, he, Keith is like an 11 year old kid you know and, and with his enthusiasm for music still hasn't been jaded a bit about it and, and Elvis the same thing it's just uh, uh, you know you gotta hear this man you gotta hear this where do you hear this you know? or see this <laughs> instrument or... yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Larry you've been in the Love Rocks NYC band for a number of years I went to the most recent show, Q1043 is the sponsoring radio station. Um, what impressed me a lot about you, because I've known you for a long time, I've known about you for a long time, uh, especially on that night, uh, you played Brian May's parts on Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, you did it very well with Luke Spiller of the Struts on vocals. Uh, I mean, that was just, is that hard to learn his or you just did it like note for note, like yeah, you just you just sit there like when you were a kid, learn picking stuff off a record, you know, and and uh, and learn it note for note, try to get inside it, and try to match the tone as close as you can, and try to just, you know, it's not up to me to to change what he did on that song, you know. Yeah, this yeah. wasn't a jam band, you know. We were we were. We were replicating that song, right. you know. And, and you uh, did it very well, well. I must admit. And then, of course, uh, Hotel California with yeah, Don Felder. With Don Felder, yeah. You yeah. do the dueling leads, the Joe Walsh, Don Felder thing at the end of Hotel California. That was a moment. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of fun. That yeah. is fantastic. Uh, about a week before that, you played on the Grammys with Tracy Chapman. Uh, that the whole world was talking about after uh, Fast Car with the country singer, what's his name? Luke Luke, Luke Combs. Combs. Luke Combs. Yeah. Um, and then did you also do the Joni Mitchell performance no. too? Or no? no. Okay. But the Tracy Chapman, I mean, like that was like the moment of the Grammys for me. I was like that and Joni Mitchell were the me too. two I, highlights. Me too. I home watching. I felt the same way. It was it was somehow, a, a, I mean, I lived through it when it first was around, you know, that song and it moved me then it was some kind of relief to hear the song i don't know yeah people were like where's where's tracy chapman and that, been there's like, that line of things are going to get better or things will be better i can't remember exactly but i don't know it was, i just felt like every it was like a i don't know there was a there was a kind of ubiquitous overwhelming emotional reaction to yeah. that performance that i had no idea was going to happen you were know? you feeling that while you were playing was it just, on that stage i was just having a good time playing it yeah you know, with tracy you know we we had worked together at the first lilith fair and um, oh wow okay many years ago and 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 it, uh, you know she's great. She's just great. It's a great song. It, Luke was fantastic, and and the other guys in the band were friends, and it was just a great hang, and and we had a great time playing the song. That's all I knew, you know. And then all of a sudden, it's um, I I wasn't anticipating this. It blew up. Yeah, it completely yeah. blew up again. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, you played pedal steel on a track of mine a long time ago <laughs> with Ray Marchica and uh, his former wife, Beth. And uh, I don't see Ray anymore, but you see Ray uh, every now and I then, I run right? into him every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, he's still doing session stuff, Broadway stuff, like whatever. I, I, the last time I saw him, he was 
in it, he had, he was doing a show. Yeah, he was doing a Broadway show. Yeah. Well, if I ever want to learn how to play pedal steel, which I, to this day I'm like, the people who play pedal steel guitars are from another planet. That's exactly. I was like, it's <laughs> flying a rocket. They ship. are aliens. <laughs> yeah, you know, I agree. Four different the ability things, to four different all limbs. those pedals and and he says it's hard to play somebody else's instrument because you have your own setup yeah. on the you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Their new album is All This Time. Everyone go out and buy it because it's awesome. Uh, you can see them live at City Winery June 11th. All the tour dates, LarryandTeresa.com and LarryCampbellMusic.net. Larry, Teresa, thank you so much. Thanks, A uh, real Jonathan. pleasure, Jonathan. Great to see you again after all these Yeah. <laughs> this is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.